This week, Kathy and I are back on the gluttony of the seas, but this week we're doing an intensive research project to, to tell the effect of overeating on emotional baggage. And we're using ourselves as the test subject, and we are eating our way through the Caribbean to determine what the result is. And one of the activities in our research uh, this week has been to go snorkeling. Now, we are beginner snorkelers, so that we took the beginner's course. And the reason is, we attempted snorkeling some time ago having not taken the course, and we, we missed the most important point, which is that when you're snorkeling, the breathing pipe needs to go vertically up out of the water. Now, when we first went snorkeling, Kathy missed that point. And while she was snorkeling, she got tired and she rolled over on her back to relax and she almost became the first person in history to drown with her face out of the water. So we took the course and it went much more smoothly. But here's what we learned about snorkeling. It doesn't matter how calm the surface of the water is, under the surface it's very busy. There are fish going in every direction. There are good things, there are bad things happening and there's a lot of activity, but you'd never know by looking at the surface. And humans are exactly the same way. We can look all calm and cool and collected on the surface, but underneath our minds are very busy. There is a lot of thought traffic. Our thoughts are going in every direction. There are good thoughts and there are bad thoughts, and they're all trying to attract our attention so they can influence our mood and our behavior. And there are three sources of thoughts that are always trying to influence us. The, th the sources are ourselves, God, and Satan. Now, how do you tell them apart? Well, our own thoughts are usually just analyzing the circumstances around us. Satan's thoughts are the easiest ones to spot because they will always get you upset, angry, fearful, negative. They, they will always make you feel worse. And God's thoughts are encouraging, comforting, and hopeful. Now, the good news is we get to choose which thoughts we want to listen to. And so that will determine our mood and behavior. So to live a transformed life, you need to choose who you're going to listen to and it's going to take practice. You want to choose God's thoughts so that you can have a positive mood and reject Satan's thoughts which are just designed to upset you. Now if you've spent your lifetime thinking negatively and if you're a half empty kind of person this is going to take practice and work but the Holy Spirit wants to help you. He's always pulling you in his direction to think more positively. So to live a transformed life choose to think God's thoughts. Now I want to hear from you. How have you learned to control your thinking so you think in God's direction and you shut off the voice of darkness? Just leave your comments in the box below. And if this is your first visit here, you need to get my free self-assessment guide. And to do that, just subscribe to my weekly email newsletter and you know where to find the subscription form. Even though I'm in Guatemala right now, I think, or Honduras, I'm not sure which, the subscription form is still right there. And I'll talk to you again next week. But this week, pay attention to what kinds of thoughts you're listening to.